So let's welcome Pastor Sarah. Hello, hello, hello. <laughs> I just first of all want to say thank you for taking time in your busy schedule to come and be a blessing to my online audience. Um, I, <laughs> I don't know why all my life I didn't know of Pastor Sarah, but my goodness, uh, once discovering you, <laughs> we were taking a, a car drive and uh, my mom was listening and she was like, oh, who's this? <laughs> and, oh, um, really? Yeah, my mom being from Jamaica really was happy. So I, I am ecstatic to introduce people to you because you're authentic. Uh, uh, we would use the expression, you're anointed. You're just, you're gifted. Um, the way that things are flowing through you is is beautiful. You're well studied as well. So all these things merge okay. together. And I figure you are the perfect person to give us wisdom about how we can change our lives. The name of my podcast mm. is Change. And um, so the frustrating thing for me was this. I, I pray every morning and evening on, on Instagram and on TikTok and and on YouTube. And I have about between the four platforms I'm on about 1.5 million people. I get DMS from people asking me about how, you know, please help me get a job, please. I want to stop doing mm. this bad behavior that I don't want to do anymore. Um, I, I basically they're asking me, David, please pray for me. And then beyond that, David, how do I change my life? Yes. Yeah. And so you know, I would love for yeah. help. How do we change, Pastor Sarah? Honestly, I, I'm going to probably say some things that may sound controversial, but things like this would be the platform for it, right? Okay. Or, <laughs> all right, so I have been in ministry for 30 years, and I was not in the church. I didn't, wasn't raised in the church. I was raised in a Rastafarian environment. I was raised in a very diverse environment my mom was Chinese Jamaican um, my dad is uh, Jewish and black you know so it's very diverse my experience my school experience everything and one of the things I found even coming in is sometimes we want to find a really easy way to change but Ooh. change creates friction whenever you look just in natural seasons there's always something growing and something dying and whenever we want change we want change with this false idea that change is going to be simple the results can be beautiful the journey can be beautiful but there's always going to be life and death within change and we don't want to calculate for the grief and grieving that change requires for example we have unrealistic goals you may say I want to get married. That's not a realistic goal. I want to say for my wedding dress is a realistic goal. Because when you get married, when you meet that person, all of that's not within your particular control. So we find that we get discouraged when we're trying to change because we're being unrealistic with practical things. I want to lose 50 pounds. No, I will go to the gym 15 minutes a day or I will walk 15 minutes a day. That's within my control. But if I have a hormonal issue or if I'm dealing with something in my digestion, I may not have control because I may not know about it and I get frustrated in the process. So whenever we are changing and we are wanting to be in a better place, we have to calculate that A, discipline is going to be required. Discipline and discipline is never fun. And discipline is not ever something that brings all this excitement and joy. But, you know, even the Bible says, but for the joy set before him, he did something. He endured the what? The grief, the cross. So you have to let go of something to gain something else. You, when you're walking, you're going forward. But a lot of times we want to say like, get me a job. All right. I have to. I can't take responsibility for your change. And you can pray and I can pray. But if we don't put any practical steps and create faith actions within our prayers, we're only going to be praying because God himself is spirit. He's not going to walk 
to the employment office. He's not going to type or <laughs> resume for us. And wow. he's not going to go online and get classes. Some people want to improve their lives, but they don't want the investment that is required. Right now, you want a different job. You want to change. Go and get a project manager's thing from Google. That is one of the highest rated things right now. You can make a six-figure job just by getting certified through Google's project management program. What? Legit. 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 That's crazy. No joke. What? That's crazy. Yeah. Wow. But do you want to sit there and get it done? Or you want to say, you know what? I, 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 just, I just want it to miraculously fall from the sky. Mm. No. You see, God adds that super to your natural, but there is absolutely a natural portion that we're responsible for. Mm -hmm. So when you're saying, how do I change my life? I take responsibility for my life. God takes responsibility for my purpose, but I must take responsibility for my daily life within that purpose. He I puts that, that intent in me. He puts that, that, that calling in me. He puts that direction. Well, I don't know what my calling is, Pastor. So I don't know what my purpose is. As I said, I don't know where I'm going. Okay. Think of, think of it like this. If you have a toddler and you're in a restaurant mm -hmm. and you had a two-year-old toddler, your eye would be on that toddler, right? And as long as that toddler was just saying hi and, you know, just walking around within view, you would really not have a problem with the toddler exploring or discovering. The minute the toddler takes maybe something off the floor and puts in their mouth or is going to go to an electric socket, all of a sudden you may, hey, call her, right. tap his hand, something, or leap, depending on the urgency, you're going to leap out of your chair, scoop them up, no, 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 and protect them. Well, what we're doing is waiting for permission from God because we're living from an electric socket faith life versus we explore, we discover, we're walking. God is big enough, loves us enough to say, hey, uh-uh, not for you. But what we're doing is putting our life on pause and living in limbo. I don't know what my purpose is. It's okay. Walk in your passion. Walk in your desire. Walk in wisdom. And if he has an issue, he's God. You find a way to let you know, not this way. Okay, so so, so that gives me an, a, a, another question. So <laughs> we're supposed to, this is wonderful. Um, I love how you're framing things. I'm like, wow, okay, go for it, Pastor Sarah. My goodness. <laughs> oh, so when it comes to faith, you know, many times mm. as Christians, we're told, oh, the reason you didn't get that is because you don't have enough faith. Oh, so yeah. What is, what, how do we choose an action that is wise, um, practical, and that's what we're supposed to do? Or... Are we supposed to do something beyond what is our, you know, what we can figure out how to do ourselves? And that's the act of faith where God will fuse in with what we're choosing to go <laughs> Again, I am the controversial person because I do feel, again, that I am in the faith life, right? I have been a pastor for almost 20 years. I'm not a digital pastor. So I love that you have an online audience and I love digital pastoring. <laughs> There's no physical overhead, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> <Right. laughs> but you get to change lives anyway on, on these platforms. I, I say that to say that I have been in the faith world and in some instances, I would challenge us as a pastoral group to do better in some things. Can I do better in a lot of things? Absolutely. But in this one thing, is let us not cultivate a Christian culture that is based on unworthiness and low self-esteem and fear of failing God. Mm. So you're saying it's because I don't have enough faith. Now, who can measure your faith? If we have faith as a mustard seed, anything can be done. So yeah. now you doubt. I don't even have a mustard seed. Look at, the, look at the narrative that it puts within yourself. David, let me share this with you. There has been a study done by a Japanese um, scientist, and he wrote a book about it. You would love this book. It's called The Hidden Messages of Water. Mm -hmm. It is not a Christian book. It is a scientific study by a Japanese scientist. Mm -hmm. What he did was he went to different uh, lakes and plateaus and, and water around the world, 
and took different um, samples. And he did different experiments with this water. Hmm. So he had a group of people, you know, chant over a lake and collected samples. He took samples and put labels on these jars. And then he analyzed the molecular structure of the water. When some things like, I hate you, you're stupid, versus I love you, I'm thankful, prayer, mm. you know, heavy metal. And when you looked at it, the molecular structure of things like you're wonderful, thank you, I love you, look like brilliant snowflakes, like sparkling snowflakes. Mm. They're actually, you can Google it. And the other things, I hate you, you're stupid, you're not worthy, look like blobs, just blobs of stuff. Why am I saying this? We have to really understand as faith agents that when we set a narrative for somebody to speak into their own life, I didn't have enough faith. If something wrong, I did. God doesn't love me. I'm not good enough. I didn't make the right choice. Terrible person. It's because of your sin. You must have done something. That's why the blessing's not coming. If you were doing okay, God will bless you. You know what? You didn't tithe. That's why your car broke down. If I keep saying that, I am trying to change the molecular structure within my own self because I'm 70% water and I'm carrying in my body memory through my cells. And in doing that, I am impacting my own ability to create. And if God lives in me, which he does, and I'm creating in his image, which I am, and I'm spirit, then anything that God is able to do I am able to do from a creative standpoint. If he can speak it, he can have it. But I'm not speaking that because I'm being trained that something is still always wrong with me. But if Jesus did come mm. and he did and paid for it all, which he has, then what in the world is really stopping me? Nothing. Are you saying, Pastor Sarah, you don't have to live any kind of way. You can just live how you want. And, ah, I'm not saying that because the love of God constrains me, yeah. not the approval of man. Mm. Not the applause of men and not the comfortability of men, but my love for God and God's love within me is what constrains me. I don't have to perform for his blessings. I don't have to prove myself for his blessings. And I don't have to always make the right step for his blessing. Did he not use depressed people like Elijah who said, let me just die? Wow. Let me die right here. Just I just showed out in front of all these people. I mean, I called fire from heaven. You could see the anointing of God upon my life. And he says, I want to die though. I want I want to commit suicide. That's what Elijah said. And wow. yet God said, I, I get that. I understand that. You know, though, there's a widow that I'm gonna need you to go check out. And that widow wanted to commit suicide as well. You see where God is going with this? You can be powerful and mighty and have these very low moments, but God doesn't kick you out of the discipleship group. He don't ex out your prophetic ability. He sent Elijah to somebody who was right where he was in that wilderness. That girl wanted to die. Elijah wanted to die. God pulled him out and said, now go help her. Just like I provided for you in this wilderness, now go, go, go pull on the little faith she's got left and do something with it. So I'm saying to you, and to me, no, it's not that you didn't have enough faith. Sometimes you just didn't have practical wisdom. Sometimes your own narrative got in your way. Sometimes bad things happen to good people because sometimes bad people make bad choices and God got some bad kids too. Wow. So no, don't, don't buy that. Don't buy that trick. If something didn't work out, maybe something in my systematic structure was not sounded out. Hmm. It could have been a systematic error. It could be timing. It could be I did not have the right resources or collaboration. It could have mean that meant that I I was zealous, but I was not um, using using strategy. But it doesn't mean it was your faith. You, the, but let me tell you why. Oh my God, this stuff excites me because I don't like when believers yeah. really absorb a very negative thing because we do. You yeah. know, Amazing Grace. How sweet the sound that saved a what? Wretch. A wretch. Like me. Let's start with that. I'm such a wretch. I'm a son and a daughter. So imagine the paradox we're living in. Right. You're a son, you're a daughter, you're rich. Be abundant, be humble. It's so mm -hmm. conflicting. You don't 
know how to you know, kind of like navigate like oh okay i want to be blessed but i can only be blessed to be a blessing there's no way i could be blessed to just enjoy blessing right. you know so i think that uh, we just have to really allow people to remember that the bible says to every man every man has been given the measure of faith okay. not a measure not a measure the measure, the measure of faith. everybody has been given the measure that is very different from a measure because then you say pastor your faith is bigger than mine i wish i had faith like yours no my faith has been developed but we all got the same muscle wow so no mm. so no honey you don't it's not the lack of your faith there, there's that that is not now you say well jesus said oh ye of little faith yeah they had little faith but they still had some it was little. <laughs> I hear you. Because they, because they were all given the, the measure of faith. All but right. in that moment, it was not developed beyond there. So yes, the storm terrified them. But as you see that journey on, then Peter was like, you know, forget this. Crucify me upside down. His faith was at a different level because mm -hmm. he, he matured and grew it and developed it. But mm -hmm. everyone is given the measure of faith. So don't buy that lie. It's not that God is disappointed. God is looking to strike you out. God is withholding from you god is punishing you god just sits up there trying to trip you up and find ways to not make it work for you what kind of father is that i that's a reason i i originally had told christians i said you can keep your god and i will keep with satan and we'll just burn in hell together and they used to just be like shaking their head and i'm like i cannot subscribe to that god mm. because that's not the god i understand that that would be a loving father so so what can we do because uh, mm -hmm. I, what can I'm, we do i'm receiving so much from what you're saying <laughs> so, <laughs> I, I, i'm gonna i'm gonna take a personal example um mm -hmm. i recently attended a conference at, uh, a speaker's boot camp and i had an opportunity at the speaker boot camp i'm an introvert though you might not believe it uh, <laughs> and i was being quiet I was not trying to demonstrate, um, I was not trying to stick out in any way. I was just trying to learn what is it that I'm missing that I need to be able to be a more effective communicator. And so we were given a group activity where our group had to come up with a song that represented this uh, idea that um, Dr. Kristen Guillory, who runs the mm -hmm. I Recognize Speaker Bootcamp, that she gave us. And so my group was coming up with an idea and I just quietly listened to what everyone said. And, you know, one person was um, bold and, and said, OK, this is what we should do. And you should do this and you should do this. And and David, well, you're the only guy. So you do the speaking part. And I was like, <laughs> OK, hey, that's what you want to do. Cool. And while I was there now, she doesn't know I have a master's in vocal performance. You know, uh, <laughs> I, I'm like, hey, cool. So they were doing their thing and then. I was thinking that I was like, okay, well, is there anything I can do to contribute to help make it better? So I came up with an idea that if they use the soundtrack to the SWV song, I um, I get so weak in the knees, I believe it was, mm -hmm. that um, if that's underneath and they do what they wanted to do, it would make it work better. So I suggested that to the person who took charge and they said, yeah, sure. So when I went, um, we went, we were the last group to go and I, I started off in like a low voice and, and, I, and I said, uh, you remember back in the day? And, and all of a sudden, like everyone went, oh, he has a voice <laughs> and it's low and rich. And then, and, and, and so I, I didn't think much of it, but the group did its thing, it did well. And afterwards, uh, Dr. Guillory was like, uh, David, come sing for everybody. And I was like, so I sang and it was, you know, it was a great experience. They gave me a standing ovation, asked me to sing a second song. That night, one of the people came and said, so how do you feel about today? And the truth was, as wonderful of an experience as that was, it did not change the way that I felt about myself. So. Mm -hmm. It was a wonderful experience, but I didn't feel great because of the wonderful experience. I, I'm, I'm sharing that because 
you mentioned having a Christian ideal that um, caught between being humble and being confident in what God can do. And somewhere in between, it's very easy for us to get to a point where it's hard for us to believe about ourselves what God can do enough to, to take action and accomplish all the dreams and the goals, uh, the works that he's prepared in advance for us to do. So what do we do to change? <laughs> so there's an activity, there's, a, there's one of, you know, in these classes that I coach, I created a Discover Dream Do system. And in my discovery system, it involves this because there are rhythms and patterns that we have in our life. And we are who we are based on what we've acquired. And sometimes it's not who we are authentically. It's who we've acquired along the way because it helps us to function best. Because our authentic person was given boundaries and those boundaries were self-serving to the influential others in our life, not to our purpose, but to their compass. Wow. And so for you, as brilliant as you are, as gifted as you are, as talented as you are, there has been a messaging woven into you that if you actually owned it, accepted it, you're afraid of the confidence that would actually happen. You will have imposter syndrome. You will actually, you know, shy away from the attention, shy away from it because you have a certain sense of self, yet you're really afraid of accepting that sense of self as truth. It is easier for you to shy away from it and, and play humble because mm -hmm. then you don't, arrogance is mistaken for confidence and you don't want to be arrogant because your achievements yeah. and things along the way and your brilliance were celebrated in some circles, but they were also used as a weapon against you in other circles. They, people were intimidated by those and made you feel like you thought you were better than them, or you thought this, or you thought imposing false ideas into your mind that were never, ever there. So to avoid the conflict, because you'd rather peace, then you won't step into that and say, you know what, I am a master at this. I do have this on there, but I can validate your brilliance just as much without neglecting mine but you would rather validate theirs and be this silent person warming and they take surprise. But then when they're over, they're doing that, then parts of you gets nervous going, I don't, I, I didn't do it for that. I didn't do it for that. I didn't do it for that because you're trained to not do anything for you. But it's like this bottle of water. Mm. If I drank this bottle of water right now, mm -hmm. right? Or I throw it out, the water, the bottle still got wet, right? Yeah. So, yeah. You have to see your life like a pipe that even though you can't do it, it is okay that you're blessed in it. Hmm. And so the way that we change that is to go along the way and find out what is the messaging that really caused me to take that moment and not enjoy it. I didn't have to relish in it and bully somebody. Well, you know, if you had only asked me before, you'd have known that I had a master's. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you little plebs, you little plebs with your certificates. You no, know, that's not even in you to do. Mm -hmm. But one of the things would have been able to validate other people there. Well, you know what? I love how you brought that idea in. I love how you brought that idea in. And, you know, one of the things I have in my background from my, from my training is this. Maybe we could use that. That's a way to still validate my brilliance, mm -hmm. lend it to the team, and not apologize for it or not dim myself so others are comfortable because I know I probably could run circles in this moment. But I'm not there to embarrass anybody, but I'm not there to do that expense of myself either. Because you should shine. That your greatest brilliance, as um, you know, uh, what's her name, Marion Williamson says, is you know, it's to serve others, it's not to play small. So mm -hmm. I think that you change that by really sitting down and saying, what in me, what, is a story that I have learned. What am I afraid of? Why is that a fear? Hmm. Whose approval am I really looking for? Because there is somebody that's attached to that. It's not God. Mm. Because when you, look at, when you look at God's journey with God's people and all the weird people that he picked, 
to <laughs> do great things. None of them are people we would put in our leadership camp and tell them to go teach others. Not one. Mm. We wouldn't we would put them up on the pulpit as the past of the year. Wow. <laughs> the apostle that we want to, you know, be the face of Foursquare, you know, or wherever. <laughs> you know, we're not going to, we're not going to do that. But God took these people and he said, I will make you like a signet ring. I want you to shine because it causes me to shine. Mm. I am spirit. I have to have people in the earth who represent and, and radiate who I am. Mm. And they radiate not in your deficiency, but in your, in your sufficiency. Not in your lack, but in your abundance. And it's not about financial abundance. It's abundance of who I am because I carry the God of all creation inside of me. In this earthen vessel, he mm. says. Is galaxies and universes that mind of Christ that mm. caused the world to be is in me. How, how do I serve him by pretending to be stupid, mm. pretending to be insufficient? Do I have those moments of stupidity? Absolutely, but am I stupid? No. Do I have those moments of insufficiency? Absolutely. But the man are insufficient? No. And so that's what I think is when we're changing that is to find out, realize that's not a God requirement. That has been imposed to make people feel comfortable. Therefore, mm. you have a Jamaican mom. So if you were brilliant in school, then that likelihood is, oh, make sure you're on the dean's list. Make sure, you, oh, you know, David got this arm. He got the scholarship and it. Why, why, why? Oh, oh, is that right? What, what, so what is Johnny doing? Oh, hey, you know how David is. You know, he's always first in class. You know, you never know. Right? So when we have Jamaican mothers, we're like tiger moms, right? You better perform well. <laughs> and if you got a 95, so hold on. Anybody has got a higher grade? Oof. So where was the other 5%? Where's the other 5%? Mm. If you got 95, you could have got 100. Mm. Right. So, yeah, OK, so we're very driven to do that. And so there comes this very this this nervousness of not wanting to fail. So I'd rather be quiet about my accomplishments in different ways, because if I didn't make the marks, it wasn't accomplished. And then you go ask me a question. So did you graduate with honors, though? <laughs> so it's all of those kind of things that wrap up. So we begin changing it by saying, you know what, I realize that I am on a performance wheel that is not narrated by God's standards. I'm already accepted fully. I'm mm. already good, good fully. And one of the biggest gifts I can give the world is to walk in my brilliance and help others accept and appreciate theirs. Wow. Wow. You're going to have a lot to think about today, David. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I know yeah. there's probably like a bunch <laughs> of people going, okay, oh, I'm happy. <laughs> How can I find Pastor Sarah so she can help me get on the right path too? Um. I just like I like practical Christianity. I like practical Christianity. I feel feel that Jesus was very practical. All the parables he taught were from practical standpoints, things that you could use and relate to and understand. Mm. It wasn't this pie in the sky, you know, thing that was going on. It was hey, real people had real situations. They were really hungry in the desert, so we got some real fish and some real bread. Mm. And we took that and made something with it. But we <laughs> that's what he did. He was hungry and, and went to go pick the figs. You know, didn't like that. It was like, listen, here, did that not gonna work for me? I'm upset. You know, Jesus. So we go, well, Jesus was perfect. Absolutely. He did not sin, but he was he got angry. He got frustrated. He did not like when he was all the way up in uh, Gethsemane and the people fell asleep on him. That's true. He did not appreciate that. Mm. And he was dealing with depression. Mm. Think about it. I took some people, went up there. He was, the Bible said he was vexed in his spirit. That is not a joyful emotion. That's true. <laughs> he was vexed. He was under vexed. pressure. I am fighting for my life. I don't want to do this. Mm. This, I don't want to do this. Give me a note. We make it look so simple, right? Oh, not thy will, but thy will be done. Five minutes in the garden. All night. It was five minutes. They wouldn't have fell asleep. Wow. He was warring and toiling. Trying to find an out, help. And at, when he needed them to be like, 
okay, we don't know what's going on, but you got this. They, they fell asleep on him. And he was like, you couldn't even, in my, you couldn't even have the discernment to know I needed you. I needed some encouragement. Right. I, you, yeah, but we don't want to see that side, right? Yeah. Does it mean that he sinned in that? No, he's still the son of God in that. But we don't give ourselves the opportunity for God to come into those spaces because we have to pretend to be so great. We have to pretend to have every answer. We have to pretend on so many levels. But the truth is, we don't know everything. And we have to change that and really begin to say, I have to find what's right about me and stop having to figure out what's wrong. You have to do an exercise and every single day. You know, I tell the people in my class, show me how much better it can get. And they have to find what's right with them. Because mm. you do it as a parent. As a parent, if you find what's wrong with you, you're going to always find what's wrong with your kid. Why not catch them doing good? Wow. When they open the love door that. for somebody, oh, I love how you did that. Mm. Correction doesn't hurt as much when it's coming in a place of love. But it hurts when you're always finding what's wrong with me. There's always something wrong with me. And how can I rise to my occasion? How can I be my best self? How can I live my best life if everything is less about me? When you can't find what's best, I'll always operate in what's less. So we've got to hunt for good. How'd you get all this wisdom? I'm just, I'm just <laughs> Man, I've been through so much trauma and drama and my relationship with God is lit. I mean, it's a real thing. I didn't borrow it, you know? And back in Walmart and Alpha, I, I had to, I had to seek him, find him. Hey, talk to me. I said, I don't get this. I don't understand this Christianity that I, the God that I'm being taught and the God I know are two different people sometimes. Yeah. And, and uh, I don't know. I, I feel like the, <laughs> you're, you're, you're like, David, you, I don't even know about your expression right now. I don't even know what to say. <laughs> no, no. Uh, when, when you talk about when you wanted to leave the house and go to the party when you were a teenager. Oh, yeah. I, I feel like well that that <laughs> character god took your uh, um your boldness and you like well hold on let me go in this christian thing now this doesn't make sense doesn't seem like the same god yeah, it's, your, it's, it's, your, it's, your. <laughs> it's like you're like the same uh, 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 no 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 i'm gonna i'm gonna find a real god i'm gonna understand yeah. the scriptures for myself and really understand how yeah. god really is i mean it's it's wonderful yeah. how you're making it very practical very real. Does it make sense though? Is it making sense to you? It does. I wrote a book called the, the, I wrote a book called The Space Between. It's a it's a book and like a workbook at the same time. And it's how to wait on God when you don't want to. Hmm. Because I don't like waiting on God. I don't like waiting at all. <laughs> but I hated these excuses. Oh, you know, when the one door closed, another open. Oh, right. it's just not your time. Oh, that was not making any logical sense to me. I was oh. like, no, no. Just say you don't have an answer. Just a girl, I don't know. I don't know why it didn't happen. Mm. Just say that. But yeah. they give me these fake answers. Oh, you know. Ah, it's all in the wisdom of God. God cannot have me following him. And he did all this effort. Got Jesus up here, had to hide him over there in Egypt. Get to Bethlehem. All these things lined up. The shepherd, the star. You know how much work to get everything lined up just to keep me in the dark. <laughs> <laughs> so that's that that's fun for you god that's fun for you to plan or millennial from all the way over genesis and at, i mean you had all this intentionality just to intentionally keep me in the dark and stuck mm. that don't make no sense so that means to me you just don't have an answer or you're just rehashing answers that's been taught to you yeah so you want to me it's blind faith faith is not blind faith is not blind hmm. faith so is not blind if um, faith is not blind, explain that. Mm -mm. Because it means that you have no part to play, play in faith. Okay. And you have a part to play. You have a responsibility. So we'll just trust God. Okay, all right. I'm going to trust God. Like I said, I'm going to trust God. Ooh, I'm going to trust God for this money tomorrow. Ooh. Somebody have to work. <laughs> so go ahead and trust. No, what you, are, what you need to do is trust that as you're working, like I said, he'll open doors and favor and opportunity for you and cause rivers of increase to come that you were not expecting. Absolutely, but you got to give him something. Oof. When he said, 
when I didn't imagine more academy, it came up with the scripture, he will do exceedingly abundantly more than you can ask, think, or imagine, yeah. right? But the, 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 the big part is not the imagine, it's the you, more than you. You have to give him something to exceed. <laughs> wow. Oh, say that again, because I, I needed that one right there. All right. The Bible says, Ephesians 3.20, he will give you, right? He will exceed, uh, give you exceedingly, exceedingly abundantly wow. above what you ask, All right. think, or imagine. So the key is not the imagination. It's you. <laughs> if you don't imagine, if you don't ask, wow. if you don't think, then I can't exceed it. So here's the thing. If, 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 if this was, um, okay, if this is my needs yeah. or I want to be a, a, an author um, or um, I want to graduate school, whatever this measure is, say this is a normal expectation. Okay, let's say that I'm normal or exceeding expectation could be, I want to graduate school in Harvard. Okay, okay, saying that Harvard is number one. And we say, okay, so normal people want to graduate high school. I want to graduate college. But they don't necessarily say Harvard. Okay, all right. Okay. So this is just a standard. Okay. If I say to myself, I want to graduate high school. Okay. Mm -hmm. He go exceedingly above, above that. Okay, I graduate high school two months early, one week early, one day early. He exceeded it. <laughs> <That's> I <it>. say, <laughs> I want to, um, I want to graduate high school um, as a valedictorian. Mm, okay. If there's no work done, I, how can he exceed that? How can he get favor? Supposing. I was working, working. I have the brilliance. I have the chops to do it. I'm working. I'm doing my part. And boy, one of these papers happened. And ooh, it's going to mess up my little average. But I'm in faith. And the teacher goes, you know what? Redo that. That's favor that was given to me. Mm. He exceeded, mm. you see. So whatever you yeah. give him, okay. you've got to give him something. Wow. There's no tree without a seed. Wow. Right? Why, why so, didn't you teach me Bible thing. when I was growing up? <laughs> and I, I know. I mean, you'd be more confident. And so this is this this is the thing, right? So I think I talk about the space between is that when I wrote that book and I was tired of those excuses, I went to study for myself, you know, about waiting on God. Why do we always just tell people, just wait, just wait? I don't want to wait till, you know, I want to live this life a life abundantly. No, I don't want it in heaven. That's not what you promised me. Hmm. I want it here, okay? And I want to leave empty, right? I want to leave empty. And so I challenge it all the time. I, like I said, my daily confession, show me how much better it can get. Wow. If you say that, David, that's a requirement for my class. For the whole time they're in the class, they must say that every striking day, show wow. me how much better it can get. Show me how much better it can get. If you get bad news mm. and you say, Lord, show me how much better it can get. Even in the bad news, there's something going. There has to be something, something that is that being here. Yeah. And it doesn't keep you in a state of distress and depression. For in my distress, I cried out. God doesn't want to stay in distress, but he understands that you'll have it. So for viewers watching everywhere, we do have real lives that we're living. We do have real shock, real trauma, real loss. You know, my mom was stabbed to death. I was a teenager. She was on crack. I have been raped. I have been molested. I have been assaulted. I have been beaten. I have all of those things. I'm not talking to you from a very fake place. I have lived in the ghetto. I've not had lights. I've gone without food. I've had to make, um, you know, steam crackers just to eat. And I've had to have stolen uh, stuff from stores just to feed myself or my siblings. I have done a lot and I have been through a lot. I'm not telling you to, to, about this God just because he is fake. I'm not telling you just to trust him and don't do your part. I'm saying to you that you have a part to climb out. You have a responsibility as well. And he is the greatest partner ever. And he will exceed that. And he will go beyond your imagination. And he can take you further than you ever could have imagined. But all he's saying to you is, can you 
see yourself in just a fraction of the way that he sees you, that you are worth the investment. You were worth the investment. So invest in you, talk to you, build you, develop you. I posted yesterday, you are the asset. Never forget, you are the absolute greatest asset to yourself because God is in you. And wherever you are going, wherever you're walking, you are carrying all of the universes and, 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 and the potential inside of you. you. You cannot fail. The only way you're failing is wherever there's a lack of wisdom, not even a lack of resources, because I can show you how to leverage your resources. You have something in your hand. Didn't Moses just have a stick? He did not have nothing but a stick. Mm. And God said, can you throw that stick down for a second though? Pick it back up. Look at it, Moses, to use the stick. But once it came back in his hand, it was the rod of God. And that stick caused plagues to come. That stick caused the Red Sea to part. That stick caused um, the armies to stop. That stick, you know what I mean, caused water to come out of a rock. Mm. What's in your hand? It's ordinary to you, but it's certainly something God can use. And a lot of times we overlook the ordinary because we're looking for the supernatural when it comes to faith. We're looking for hocus pocus. And God is saying, it's very ordinary. Faith is very ordinary, mm. but it does extraordinary things. And Hebrews 11 encourages us further and says, hey, Noah moved with fear when he built the ark. And sometimes we want to look at it as just reverence for God. That's one way to look at it. But what about he moved with fear? Fear is not the opposite of faith. Oftentimes you're having fear while you're doing faith. Faith is moving with fear in spite of fear and regardless of fear. Ooh, I may be that. nervous. I may be anxious, but I'm doing the thing. Mm. I may feel overwhelmed. I may feel I'm lost. I may feel my feet are not on the ground. But I woke up and I said, yes, even though I'm straining on the inside and I'm going, I would rather do something else. Yes. So no, faith is not the opposite of fear. and Faith is not the opposite of faith. Sometimes it's like they wrap in each other. But faith is saying, I hear you because sometimes fear is a good thing. Sometimes fear is saying, hey, there's danger ahead. Sometimes fear is saying, let's calibrate. Sometimes fear is saying, ooh, like on a roller coaster, this is going to be exciting. <laughs> It's something different. It's something great, you know, mm -hmm. but we want to look at fear as our enemy all the time. And sometimes fear can be an accompaniment if thought of in the right way. And there are times that we're terror and terrified and those things can be a different type, size of it. But sometimes it is something that lets you know that, hey, I'm still, I'm still doing it. No, it couldn't have been just, oh, so peaceful and confident. Oh, where are we going to get this timber from? No, we're making it look as if, and then, and then for what, what, as a believer, how can we measure up to that? Right. How can we measure up to these men of faith and men of God in the Bible who, you know, Abram just went to a land he didn't know. So I'm, like he didn't think, as a natural man would think, all them camels and all them things, how are we going to feed them? Right. I don't know. But God was like, it's okay. I'm going to provide for you along the way. You'll get more on your way than when you start. Just keep going. Mm. It's... It's so helpful when you see the reality of the humanity of those in the Bible, yes. and, you know, so it's not like a movie that you never could be a part of. It's, no, that, that's us. Women in the Bible, you know, uh, God validates women in the Bible all the time, even though people make it look a different way, you know, women just submit and subject and where God um, validates them from the Old Testament. I mean, the daughters of Zillah Hafad changed the entire real estate game. It was them that changed yeah. all of Israel's real estate um, laws. Mm. We're not talking about that, are we? No. <laughs> we talk about how uh, God advocated for Tamar, even though she had set mm. up her father-in-law. Right. She posed as a prostitute, slept with a man, got pregnant, and mm. God was like, but I'm going to vote in her favor, though. <laughs> what? Don't let me start. <laughs> I'm like, okay, so I found a you, rebel, yeah! I'm <laughs> So I'm letting you know, God is your advocate. He is not your adversary. He is not looking for what's wrong with you. He already knows everything that's right with you. Wow. So, so don't walk anymore in that shame and fear of consequence and fear of judgment and fear. No. Let, let me Go get that statement. Me. Let me get that statement that you have your students say. What is it that you, 
that you make. Oh, show me how much better it can get. Show me how much better it can get. Show, show me, me how, much, how much better. How much better it can, it can be. get. Wow. It can get. Mm-hmm. Show Thank me how much you. better it can get. Thank you, Pastor Sarah. I, you know, the, at you're the top, welcome. I, at the top of my list was the what does I am an I am the asset mean to you? But you got that one already. I'm like, okay. Oh, I didn't ask you about the importance of a vision board. If you have time to. Ooh. Yes. Is that important? Like I, I never Absolutely. put up on the vision board and <laughs> you're going to laugh. I, I have a, a company called Content Creating Academy where I help faith-based entrepreneurs learn how to use social media to connect with the clients they want to serve. And so for class a few weeks ago, I said, hey guys, guess what we're going to do? <laughs> and I, I, I used the basic concept that you shared with, um, with one edition um, there's a, another um, coach that I'd heard talk yeah. about creating um, a vision board of your accomplishments from like the past year. So I had them mm-hmm. do one of accomplishments for 2022. And I did that one myself. And then I have yet to do the, to finish the next part of it. But I said, all right, I never knew this, but I believe Pastor Sarah says we should have short range, mid range yeah. and long range vision board. So teach, just just in a brief moment, and, and I know that if people want to get a deeper dive, we are going to direct them how to connect with you. Yes, yes. Yes, because I, so, I want so, everyone to have this experience that we're having right now. So right now, um, I haven't taken it down yet, but on my Facebook is my class that I did on vision boarding. So if anybody wants to go and do the long version, and it's not really long, it's really just an hour, uh, you can definitely go and find that out um, and just click on it and figure it out. But here's why yeah, you need to do a vision board. For those of you who are with believers, um, the Genesis 15 is our premise for the vision board. Okay. Yeah. And so, um, uh, oh boy, Abram had said to, had said to, God had said, hey, I'm going to give you a son. So you can start it in uh, chapter 15, verse one. And he says, how am I going to have a son? He says, the only person I have in here is Elias there, my, my servant. But the key words is this dissect in the Bible is really important because he says, he says, um, see, I only have Eliezer here. And God says, Abram, look to the stars of the sky and your descendants shall be even more like this. Hmm. So see, the evidence is here, God. I don't have no son ability. Okay. God says, let me give you a visual picture though. Because Mm -hmm. you're just Mm -hmm. seeing what's around you, but you're not looking for what's ahead of you. I'm going to put a vision, a visual in front of you and give you a picture of what that's going to look like. Mm -hmm. And that gave him a snapshot. And it says after that, and Abraham believed God and he counted to him as great righteousness. After he got a visual from God, he believed And see, that's what I'm talking about. Faith is not always blind. Sometimes, but Gideon needed a fleece Mm. to believe. And Thomas said, Thomas said, what? Unless I see the nails in his hands and the scar, right? I won't believe, right? But did did Jesus kick him out of the discipleship group? No, he actually came down and said, here's my hand. We look at that as a rebuke. Oh, blessed are they that don't see. I look at it as a compassion of Jesus. Wow. That's where you are, Thomas. You know what? I'm going to come and I'm going to show you because that's what you need. And it's okay that you need that. There's other people that are happy without it. Blessed are they. Happy are they. They're happy without it. But it's okay. For you, that's what you need. So believe now. Different kind of Jesus, right? So when you talk about vision board, what it does is it creates a generation effect in your brain. And a generation effect in your brain is where you, if you originate an idea from within versus just being inspired from without, the brain will actually begin to work in solutions to get it done. Your brain will begin to turn on its problem solving um, abilities to say, I need to move towards that. So scientifically, whenever you have a vision board, there's a lot of things that it triggers within the brain. It triggers cortisol, it triggers hope, it triggers um, functionality to say, I am aiming at that. So no. You, it's just like when you decide because you made an act of your will and you decided to buy a white Toyota, all of a sudden you see white Toyotas around you. Yeah. At, no matter which color, but you, your brain accepted that was your decision. 
So when you make a vision board and you intentionally have to cut it off, you if you um sorry, you have to cut it off your vision board, and if you have to spend the time imagining it, if you have to spend the time writing it, if you have to spend you're you're using every single learning ability to engage the brain in making a, a decision. And can two walk together lest they agree? No. no. So when you can agree with yourself, because you can disagree with yourself, your heart can say something and your mind can say something else. Okay. But when your mind and your heart, because I have now lodged it in my heart that this is my intention and my brain has accepted this as truth, then there is nothing that my brain is not going to start working towards bringing that thing to me. I'm going to start seeing opportunity. I'm going to start seeing resources. I'm going to start seeing connections. I'm going to start seeing my own ability. I'm going to start taking personal inventory of how I have what's inside of me to get it done. Mm -hmm. And my faith says God will, God will take care of the, the timing. God will take care of the other things I don't know that I have. So a vision board is absolutely necessary to turn on manifestation in your life. Mm -hmm. Why I do it in smaller goals is because I believe people are prone to loving reward than they are rebuke so when you have smaller goals in smaller times that are achieved yeah. then they give you motivation to sustain for the longer goal okay. but when you say i want to uh, lose 50 pounds and you only lose five after two weeks you're looking at 45 that you haven't done mm, and you say right. forget it it's taking me too long because if this happened in two weeks oh i'm looking at three four months but what if I said to you, hey, in 30 days, you want to lose five pounds. Mm. And in 30 days, you lost 10. Yeah. You exceeded it. What's right. that going to do? You're going to keep on doing what you're doing. Mm. But if I make it all your big mega goals, I'm never going to get that. I'm never going to get that. I'm going to get that big 12,000 square foot house. Or I'm never going to make manager position. But what if my goal in one year was to just be in an 18 foot house? and then turn that in another year and make it a different profit. Then I'm looking at 10 years. So I have my big 10 year thing, but let's work it down into smaller things that I can feel because wherever there's reward and victory, there is confidence. And I will repeat the same cycle, right? And so whenever you duplicate it, you're going to get the same results. Mm -hmm. That is why school is the way that school is, right? It's a repetitive thing. Mm -hmm. But when you get rewarded, you're more enjoyable. You'll you're, you're, you're celebrate yourself. You'll love it. You'll you're, you're sink yourself into You want that feeling of victory. Yeah. But the longer you drag things out, um, even though that's practical, in some ways, we focus on the 30 days. Okay. We focus on the 90 days. So my coaching programs have 30, 90. You know, they're different types of things based on what people want. And we, we do it that way. And even in the 90, even in the year, some people who sign up for like this platinum level I have where they just want to be with me all year long, <laughs> then I, we don't have your goals. I still break it down. We are doing 30 days. And every single time I've had, you know, people, I'm shocked. I didn't know I was doing that much work. No, you didn't know because I'm working you, but I don't make you think it's work. Mm. Because you're going to get overwhelmed. But if you are getting pleasure along the way, right? Because we're going to move towards pleasure. Yeah. And we're going to move away from pain. But is there sacrifice? Yes. Is there work? Yes. But if you can find joy in it, it makes it easier. So that's, you have to have a vision board because it is absolutely necessary for manifestation. It helps you to organize. It helps you to focus. It brings order into your life. And wherever there's order, there is fruitfulness and multiplication. And there was a void, Genesis says. And God decided to spread out his week and plan his week. And he said, day one, I'm going to say light. I'm going to declare something. I'm going to organize this chaos because there is just chaos. Mm. And I don't want the chaos, but I'm not going to set my goals all in one day. I'm going to put light today, check that off my list. The next day, I'm going to create some birds and some things. I'm going to separate the night from the I got a plan. Mm. I'm going to work my plan. Mm. And little by little, I'm bringing order to this chaos. And when I like what is done and when it looks, I'm going to look at it and I'm satisfied. It is good. Mm. No, I am resting, not because I'm tired, but because I'm fulfilled. Hmm. So now I go into the work of working with the humans that I've created in my world. So God hasn't stopped working. So it certainly couldn't be that he's tired and he stopped resting because he was tired. No, he's still working. 
And so you have to do that to bring order to your life. When you bring order, multiplication comes, fruitfulness comes. And the brain loves order and the brain loves discipline. And I'm a highly creative person. And yeah. yet I've trained myself to be disciplined because zeal without discipline is just fire. Yeah. Discipline with no zeal is boredom. And I'd rather live in the tandem of two. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So yeah. So wow. they definitely can go on Facebook and, and get the, 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 the deeper class. Um, on there and you know uh before i take it down i keep forgetting to take it down but it's up there now so i leave it up there for a whole another week or so i guess so okay. your audience can definitely take advantage of it and just look at it but you need to do it no matter when 82 percent of people by the second week of january forfeit their goals 82 hmm. percent. that's a lot yeah that's a lot so uh, yeah i don't want you your audience to do that or mine so i i drive them no come on New Year start anytime. New Year can start today. Mm. Hey, man, we can start today. So I'm wanting to get everybody. I want your class to be overflowing. I don't. I don't know. Like you, all, you had <laughs> your class filled up. I know in January, but you know. So yes. Yes. I, I, <laughs> so t tell tell us if we want to sit at the feet of Pastor Sarah and learn some life strategies in your. I want to call it the Dream Academy. It's it's called Im impossible. Imagine, imagine, imagine. Okay. imagine yeah. more. Yeah, imagine more because I love that word more mm. because less is not an option. Oof. Okay, less is not an option. Teach us how can we get enrolled in the Imagine More Academy experience? All right. So the best ways to get me is through social media, and the only reason I say that with my class is I do like to talk to people who want to enroll in the class because I want to make sure that I'm the best coach for them. And I want to get to know them. I like to know people. So I am not at the stage where I've chosen to automate my classes. So those of you who are listening or watching, I deliberately don't uh, automate them at the moment because I do like to know who you are. I want to make sure I'm the best fit for you, that you can get the maximum out of the class because we vibe together and we can tolerate each other and we can you know, grow together. Because honestly, for me, any person that goes through my class, they never leave my life. Mm -hmm. They have access to me for the rest of their life. And so I want to make sure that I take, I take personal responsibility. I begin not just having you in the class. I pastor you during the class. Mm -hmm. Whatever you're going through, I am there. Whatever celebrations and traumas, I'm there. So I prefer for you to, to call me, to text me, and you can reach me at 469-278. 4828. You can text me there so we can schedule a call. That's 469-278-4828. You can find me on social media. You can find me at I am S-A-R-A-C-O. I am S-A-R-A-C-O. No dots, no hyphens, no numbers. People fraud us all the time. So just stick with I am Sarah C-O and that's it. Or you can find me on Facebook, Pastor Sarah Connor, S-A-R-A-C-O-N-N-E-R. And on TikTok, I am Sarah Co on TikTok as well. That's where I am. So on TikTok, I do talk a lot about abuse, um, recovery, um, more sensitive things like that. But either way, you can find me on any of those platforms. I'd love to have the opportunity to do that. I only take only my group classes are not mega and they're not big because I am so nosy and I do get into your life. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I could I could have a very reduced rate and say, oh, how hundred of us are on here. But I don't get to get in your life. I don't get to 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 walk with you. I don't get to pray with you in the middle of the week. I don't get to to do those things. So I prefer a more boutique style and and and, and unique individual um, mentoring kind of program than I do a broad scale thing. And that's just my preference right now. Who knows if it will change? Right now I'm not exhausted. I love what I'm doing. I enjoy it. So it still gives me energy to do this in a smaller setting. So my classes do fill up because I don't um, make it huge, right? So the next one starts in February, uh, the 21st, and we have them on Tuesdays at 7 o'clock. They're always recorded. Uh, you get supplemental material. I mean, it's, it's done well. And I hope to encourage you, whether you are in the faith or not, these principles still apply. Mm -hmm. And hopefully you'll feel loved, you'll feel valued, you'll feel encouraged motivated, inspired, and you'll be held accountable. 
And those are principles, whether you believe in the God we serve or not, we serve him in this way as well, to accept you, to love you, to receive you. And prayerfully, you understand that the God that we serve unconditionally absolutely believes in you and loves you as well. So, but we won't push him down your throat. We won't shove him down your throat. But as agents of his kingdom, we're just saying, hey, he's here and we're here. So find me at 469-278-4828. I am Sarah Co on Instagram or pastorsara.com. Pastor Sarah Connor on Facebook. I'm on, and pastorsara.com is my website. So, all right. So that's, that's it, David. I hopefully, hopefully you learned something. Did anybody learn something? If so, you know, find me, DM, direct message me. I do manage my own social media. I'm not like David yet, you know, who has all his um, social media teams. <laughs> you know, he, I don't have a Luisa. But I, <laughs> oh, so I am I am posting and I am responding. It's not a robot. You know, again, I love people. So I, I you know, I, I absolutely love people. And so that's something I love doing. So, yeah. <laughs> well, I, and, I am overjoyed and I am extremely grateful that you have graced us with your presence and your wisdom today. Thank you so very much. And, uh, and what did you learn, David, before you run? What, what, what was most meaningful? What was most meaningful to you? To you? You're always an interviewer. You never get interviewed. So what was most <laughs> meaningful to you? Ooh. Wouldn't you want to know David's audience? Yes. What was most meaningful to you from our conversation today? What is mm -hmm. your takeaway? What is, what is your growth moment, if there's any? Uh, I, what are you, you going to noodle on? I'm like a deer in headlights. Like, <laughs> which, which one do I pick? I don't know, but okay. So the fact that I, you know, I, I picked a, a real uh, experience for myself and in, in that uh, <laughs> it's funny. I had asked the Lord for um, a certain dollar amount in, uh, of clients um, for an event I went to. And then I was upset at myself because I realized God answered my prayer. I just didn't execute because I didn't feel good about myself. And then I was like, mm. I don't understand. Like, and so what you're saying and, and how you broke down the way that the church has taught us um, a version of Christian experience where we don't believe in ourselves. We almost feel us evil to get to that point of confidence um, mm. or, or to, to let our light shine fully, right? And so right. listening to what you said, I realized that um, it's important to change our perspective and, and embrace what God, the big God of the universe really desires to do in and through us. Yeah. We are fearfully and wonderfully made. And um, I like to say it this way, you know, how can I would be the statement that I would use, how can I versus, oh, that's impossible. No, how can I? And mm -hmm. you gave me another way to frame it um, and what it is that you ask your students to do. So um, I would say that you helped me to see <laughs> uh, a, a way to have confidence in my Christian walk and mm -hmm. to be okay, you know, to be okay with that journey, that side of the journey. But then that's the win. So you know how in the New Testament, this is another one that loves to be used. There's none good but God. Hmm. Okay, but what does Genesis say when God created everything? He said it was good. Hmm. <laughs> we were already created when he said it was good. Even though he knew we were going to have to walk on this garden and all these kind of things and we were going to turn his back on him all the time. He looked at all, God looked at all he made and he said, it was good. Mm. And I want to say, he says it was very good. Mm. So write that down on your mirror as well. So he says, there's none good but God. But what is the context Jesus was talking about? Will you take that note and make it look like we're not good? But if we are in his image, how can we not be good? Mm. Intrinsically. Now, do we choose to not do good things? Yes. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we choose to harm people or people choose to harm us. Yes, like I said, God's got some bad kids. Or there's some people that, that um, you know, are, are, their, their nature has been given over to a reprobate, wicked state. 
-hmm. But we're not talking about those people. We're talking about you and me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and sometimes we have a hard time going, but I am good. Mm. I am good because God looked at me and he says, it's good. I understand you have a limp, Jacob, but you're still walking. You're good. I know that you're deceived, but I'm still going to do a promise for you. You're good. Mm. So now I can move in that vibe and in that assurance. And I won't put any limits on myself and I will not take the risk. If I fail, it's okay. I'm good. I'm not my measurement of my failures or my successes. I'm good just because I'm good. That's it. There's no other reason or justification. I don't have to earn it. It is because it is. I'm an asset. When he spoke that, yeah, when he spoke that, let there be life, let there be... Mm. And God looked at it and he said... And he saw it was good. Let that echo. Let that, let that echo locate the faith within you. Mm. My. Okay. Thank you, okay. Pastor Sarah. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. Guys, it was great being with you. I hope to meet some of you soon in my travels. Uh, if you ever hit me up on social media stuff, tell me what state and stuff you're in. But sometimes I'll be traveling. I'll be trying to find people to go eat food with. Because, you know, I'm out here in these single streets. Ish. I, I'm not in no streets. I'm not in no streets. No, I am not in the streets. I am afraid of those streets. I, those streets scare me. I, I'm going to tell you. I'm, I'm just going to be right here in the Lord. Under the shadow of his wing. <laughs> I heard that. All well, right. Well, God bless you. Let me know if you need anything else. And, um, oh. All right. Well, thank you. And we look forward to hearing testimonies about how the impact of what this message uh, is has made on your life. I love to hear in the comments, just like she did to me. <laughs> yeah. What is it that you got from our broadcast today? So I'm what's your imagine more moment? Yes. What's your, your imagine, imagine more moment? Okay. Yeah. What's your imagine more moment? How are you going to imagine more for you? If if we got you to imagine anything more for you, uh, be more settled in your faith, be more confident in who you are, then this was absolutely a win and we are here for it every single time. Beautiful. All right, Pastor, thank you. And I you're welcome to hang with you on another occasion. God bless you. Bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>